Hey everybody, today we're going to make the Onshape Cup. Um, so we're going to follow these directions just like we did last time. And we are going to show you guys how to make it in Onshape. So as you can see here, this is what the final product should look like. Um, put on my little cursor here thing. Of course, it's not ready. Give me a second, sorry. There we go. So as you can see right here, here's what the final design is going to look like. Um, if you look at these, it says click on the documents just like we did last time. And today we're going to name it Cup Activity. So again, after you sign in, you're going to go to Documents. You're going to go to Create. You're going to go to Document. And then we're going to title it in this case, um, like it says, Cup Activity. Not Cupid. That's my name. Press OK. Again, you're going to see front, top, and right. Um, first thing we got to do is change the units, though, as we can see in the document page here. Workspace units, still in millimeters. Most of the stuff we do is going to be in that. So we're going to press OK. Green check mark. Doesn't really show anything that's done, but that's OK. It's in millimeters now. We scroll down. You're going to see select sketch. Select the front plane. So we're going to come over here into sketch. Press sketch. Select the front plane. And then you're going to stay in that, that view um, and select the front view in the view cube. So come over here, and as you can see, now we're in the front view. So from here, select the circle tool, it says. So circle tool is up here, and you can drop this down. There's a center point, three point circle, and ellipse. We want the center point circle. We're going to always start from the origin. We're going to come out and click, and there's a couple ways you can do these dimensions. Um, you can either right now put in the dimension, which in this case is 62 millimeters, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Press 62, don't worry about the units because we've already defaulted them. You can press enter and it'll automatically adjust. Kind of saves you a step and um, in the directions I tell you to press um, the dimensioning tool which is up here, but in this case you don't necessarily have to do that if you do this step. So if I keep going, um, it says the circle tool, start from the origin, select the dimension tool, and again you don't have to do that because we just hit it in and you put in 62 millimeters. The next step after we press the green check mark is to go ahead and press extrude. Extrude is up here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to extrude this face and it tells me in a depth of eight millimeters. So I'm going to come up here, press eight, enter, and now I have my circle. Press the green check mark as it says right here. Scroll down to the next part. It says to draw a new sketch, a completely new sketch. Um, onto that surface that you've created. So again, I like to take these origins away now that it's getting a little little clustered. Um, I can press the eyeballs on each one of these um, and it makes it just basically completely clear um, so that you can see your object a little bit better. Um, so the next thing it says to create a new sketch onto the front surface. Now it doesn't really matter if it's the back or the front in this case. Um, you're not going to be able to tell the difference, but it just needs to be uh, consistent in whatever direction you're going. So in this case I'm going to pick this face and then it says again to press the circle. We're going to start from the center of the circle and it says shows you see how it kind of like locks in here. Even if I try and hit this origin it won't let me because it's focused on the sketch plane. If I come over here only on the plane of the sketch that we're dealing with. So in this case it's projecting that to that center. And as you can see no matter what I do, no matter what view I'm in, it'll only stay on that sketch which is great for us. So in this case it says if I come back over here to 56 now. So I'm going to click randomly and then I'm just going to press 56, press enter, and now I have my inner circle as you can see inside of that piece just like that. After you hit that, um, you are then going to hit the green check mark. Green check mark. Still there so it's okay. Um, it automatically keeps the latest sketch visible and it removes the old sketches which is what we want in this case so that's great. If it's for whatever reason removes this sketch it doesn't look like it's there just turn it back on um, and it should be good to go. Next step create an extrusion again of that outer ring now and it's going to bring that up in this case we want that to be 22 millimeters so 22 and again it's already set to millimeters so I can just press enter and then it says to press the green check mark so I press the green check mark. Now I'm looking a little bit better more like a cup um, create another sketch you're saying now, um, and this one's a little confusing. We're not um, going to start creating the smaller pieces inside, um, so I want to make sure that you guys are clear on this. When we hit sketch on this one, it says select the inside base of the cup. 
that is this inside of here. And I know that's hard to see um, and hard to visualize when you're learning all this stuff, but um, don't hit the top and don't hit the bottom all the way around here because it'll mess everything up as far as your measurements are concerned. So as you can see, um, this blue plane, this is where we're at. We're in the inside of this cup right here. So again, now that we have that sketch, it says to draw a circle, um, select diameter circle, which is the center circle, um, select the point in the top part of the inner circle, select and drag the circle, and that's a lot of words, but if you look at this picture, and it's going to be bigger in your world, um, the picture actually shows that it's just floating right where my green dot is right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle, and there is no real science to this, it's just kind of um, placing it for now. and. To get this like dash mark, all I'm doing is moving my mouse to meet the origin and moving my mouse up in that direction. What it does is it just uses projection to show that. Um, click it once, and again this says to do it four millimeters. So I'm going to hit four, hit enter, and again it looks like it's just floating, but at least it's on the inside of that, and we'll mess with the rest next. Then it says to select the vertical constraint. Now this is where it kind of forces it to be in position, in the position specifically that we want it to be. In yours it'll show all these constraints across the top, but because I am split screen it's not going to. We're going to hit this drop down in my case, and I'm going to hit vertical constraint. If I hit that, I'm going to hit the inside center point of the little circle, and the center point of the actual circle, and as you can see now, it's perfectly lined up. If I go back to my front view, it's perfectly lined, and it cannot be moved from there. If I even press this, um, even if I go back into that, I cannot move it anywhere left and right, only up and down. It's literally locked into that scenario, which is exactly what we want. So now that I'm here, I can go ahead and press the check mark, um, and what it wants you to do now is dimension that so that it locks in even horizontally as well as vertically. So if you look, we are right here, and we are going to go back into that sketch, and we are going to press the dimension tool. We're going to press the center mark and the center mark, and it'll bring over in a dimension. And in this case, it says 25.4. Press enter, and now you can see it moved that down, and this thing isn't going to go anywhere now. It's not going to go up and down. It's not going to go left and right. Um, it'll be consistent. So I can then, um, let me make sure it says, do not press the green check mark, and that's important. Um, I should probably put that in bold so that you guys move this over a little bit. There, just so that you guys can make sure not to do that. You do not want to press that. Um, and the reason being is because if you cancel out, you're going to have to come back in anyway, so it's silly. So now you're going to do a select a circular pattern, and this is kind of new. Um, a circular pattern basically just allows you to take one object and make it um, repeat itself in a circular fashion a number of times that you identify. So in this case I'm in this sketch, now I can go up to the pattern tool which is up here, um, and if I hit that little arrow down here you'll see circular pattern, and that's what I put right here just so you can see. If you hit circular pattern, um, it's pretty easy, you hit just select the small circle, and as you can see it pops up and kind of shows you a preview of where those circles are going to be. It also shows you a multiplier right here. So we've already mentioned how big the circle is, and it says we want it to go around six times. I press enter, and as you can see it populates those. I can then press um, finally the green check mark, and now I have my six circles repeated around that circle um, very clearly. Scroll down. Now we're going to extrude those up, um, and it says six profiles at six millimeters a piece. So we're going to come in here, we are going to hit that extrude again, and we're going to select each one of these circles, and you'll see that pop up. You might have to rotate around to get to uh, some of them. Um, some of them are a little trickier than others, and as you can see, it's starting to select, and as you can see, I selected the wrong piece. Now you'll see the whole inside. If you make a mistake, you can just come back here, and you can hit these X's until you figure out. Now, as you can see, I didn't screw up on the first two, so I can come back here. I'll zoom in, and you see where the yellow is. Um, that's what you want, just around the circle. Not this, but you want just that yellow around the circle that you're trying to identify up. So again, here, and here. You have to have to play with it a little bit. It's, it's a little touchy. So we come back here, um, and again, six millimeters is the depth, and it'll push it out. Again, if it's going the wrong direction, you can always flip it um, for whatever reason it might might be. But that's it for the circle. And then you can hit the green check mark as it says. Now I'm right here, and it shows what that preview should look like. Okay, next thing, create another sketch. Um, so we're going to create another sketch onto here. The You can also just um, reactivate the sketch that you already made within Sketch 3. It's totally up to you. Um, but select the sketch you made from the small circles is what I put in the directions. It might just be easier for you to do that. Um, so I'm going to select the sketch. 
then I made those circles in and you can just highlight those things. If you double click them, you go back into that sketch and it makes it a little easier to see everything. Um, and that's where you have to do it anyways to modify. The next thing it tells you to do is to make a arc three point arc. If you come up here, you'll see arc. If you drop this down, you'll see three point tangent, center point and conic. Um, we're going to do three point arc and you're going to go from center to center to as close as you can probably get. We can get really close right about there. It doesn't have to touch because we're going to use a constraint to identify and make that tangent to each other so that it works out perfect. So now that I have that, um, you're going to click on the third, um, like it says right here, third point, and that's all I did was just create that third point so that it was really close. Select the tangent constraint, so do not press the check mark yet. So we're going to come back over here to constraints, and you'll see tangent. You're going to hit the arc itself, and you're going to hit the inside circle. And as you can see, it locks in with that tangent. Um, so now it's perfectly aligned here, and it's going through that piece. Um, from there, you can hit the circular pattern. So now we're going to make these this arc go around, just like we did the circles. You're going to come up here to um, pattern, and it's already selected for us, circular pattern. Select it once. I want it to go around six times. Double click it. I apologize. Six. Press enter, and it'll, you see it gives you a perfect preview here, um, and they, they actually lock in perfect. So you press uh, the green check mark, and it looks like it disappears, but remember we hid that sketch, so it should be should be good to go. Um, the next thing is to extrude those basic profiles, and that's those little things like this right in here, and I got, I got it perfect right here. Um, that's what you're trying to extrude multiple times. So if I come in here and I press extrude, I can select each one of these. Oop, messed up again, so again I can press that little X. You can see it's it's a little touchy here and there. Oop, move it right perfect. And as you can see, it's going to start extruding those automatically. And you're going to have to rotate. Perfect. And perfect. Perfect. I'll rotate inside of here. Good. And we're going to add those pieces to it. Um, the depth, again, as you can see here, it says six millimeters. So I punch in six, I press enter, it'll give me a little preview. I can now press the green check mark, and as you can see, the cup is completely done. You can turn off the sketches if you want to make it look pretty, so you don't see any of the other marks, and we are completely done. I hope this helps, and if any of you have any questions, um, contact your teacher. Thank you.